Good morning and welcome to worship on this October 4th. It is wonderful to have you with us. We'll be starting our service today with a blessing of our three-year-olds. And so Heather will come forward and do that for us today. Today we have a blessing of our three-year-olds. Three-year-olds, we're so excited you are about to begin Sunday school. It will be so wonderful to spend time learning about God's love through stories, crafts, songs, and, and activities. Parents, when your child shares a story or their craft from Sunday school, this is a great time to talk about what they learned. This will increase their enjoyment of Sunday school because they will sense it is important to you as well. Since we are not able to gather together in person, we're going to bless these gifts for our three-year-olds. They are children's prayer books that help our three-year-olds learn that God wants you to talk to him. In fact, that's what we call praying. Let's end today's blessing with a prayer. Dear God, bless these prayer books. Let them be a reminder that you are listening. Bless Jackson, Ivor, Freya, Barrett, Ruby, Leah, Annie, Aaliyah, and Priya, with the joy of learning about your love. We lift these children and their families up in prayer as they start Sunday school with us. May the examples of your words from the faith caregivers in their lives encourage them and support them with prayer, faith, love, and hope. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Our opening hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness, number 521. and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm for care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on you the high and lowly, through changes joined in tune, sing holy, holy, God triune, on you at earth's creation, the light first had its birth, on you for our salvation, Christ rose from death's of earth, on you our Lord victorious, the Spirit sent on you most glorious a threefold light was given today on weary nations the heavenly manna falls to holy convocations the silver trumpet calls where gospel is ever gaining from this our day of rest. We reach the rest remaining to spirits of the blessed. We sing to you our praises, O Father, Spirit, Son, the Church is Blessed be the Holy Trinity, 
one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us together pray. Lord, Lord God, God of grace and, and liberty, on the, the night of the Passover, the sacrifice lamb became, became a sign of freedom. freedom. And, and you freed the people of Israel from, from slavery in Egypt. In Jesus, you freed all humanity from sin and death. Help us live into this new life, teaching us to serve you in faithfulness as you have served us. To you we offer our gratefulness in the name of the one who turned slavery into new life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Sunday, everybody, and happy first day of Sunday school to our children. Our bubble and Bible story happens many years after the story of Passover that Pastor Eric is going to share in a little bit. But I wanted to share a different story today from Deuteronomy with you because I thought it would be a great story for the first day of Sunday school. Today's story is from Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's a message from God that Moses shares with the Israelites about the importance of learning about God's stories. These are the stories that we find in the Bible. And God uses Moses to tell everyone these important stories and rules that he wants them to learn. That's exactly what you're going to do in Sunday school each week. And we have an awesome new Sunday school leader named Marissa. Marissa is so excited to share these Bible stories with you. Right now we're doing Sunday school virtually through Zoom. And if you haven't had a chance to sign up yet, contact us to find out how. Today's story comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Moses spent a lot of time talking to God up high on a mountain. And when he comes down the mountain, he shared with all the Israelites everything he had learned from God. God had rules he wanted them to follow. Those rules helped people understand how to love God, how to respect and listen to your parents, how to be kind to others, and do things like don't lie or don't steal. But God also wanted the Israelites to understand and not just hear the stories and rules one time. God wanted them to keep sharing those stories from him and teach them to their children and their children's children and their children's children's children. God wanted these stories to be a big part of their lives and our lives too. So God asked Moses to share this important message with them. Moses, after he came down the mountain, he went and talked to the Israelites and he said, I have a message from God. These are the commands, the decrees, the regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. Now, people didn't exactly understand what all of that meant. So Moses tried to explain it even more. Listen, oh Israel, there's only one God and we all are a part of his family. You must love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Which really means you need to love God with everything you say, everything you think, and everything you do. Moses went on to say, you also need to teach your children about God. Talk about God when you're at home or when you're on the road. Talk about him 
when you're going to bed and talk about him when you're waking up for the day. Talk about God all the time. The people were grateful to hear this from Moses. This message from God was so important. It helped them understand that even though they were traveling and didn't really feel like they had a good place to worship God, they could still talk about him. But with this message from God, Moses also shared with them that this is a great reminder that we all are all a part of God's family. The people shared stories about God when they were traveling all over. They told them to their children and encouraged their children to share those stories with others. Now there's also this funny part of this story. God tells everyone to tie the stories and the rules from God, so the ones we find in our Bible, he tells them to tie them on their hands. And he even says, you need to wear them on your forehead. I think he was really telling them to keep things handy and remember them. Because if you glued them to your forehead, you'd look kind of silly walking around. So as you start Sunday school today, remember, talk about God's stories from the Bible. That helps us keep them handy and remember them. Have a good time in your first virtual Sunday school class. Our reading for today comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th and 13th chapters. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts in the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, 
both human beings and animals. On all of the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this observance in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So last week, we heard the story of Joseph and how he wound up down in Egypt. Now, at the end of the book of Genesis, Joseph dies. And he gets his brothers to promise him that they will return to the promised land at some point and bring with them his bones so that he may be buried up in that promised land. Well, now we enter into the book of Exodus and many years have passed and there is a new pharaoh who is sitting on the throne. This was a pharaoh who never knew Joseph and knew very little about him. But he knows the Israelites. He knows how great in number they are at this time, and he has a fear of them. And so he enslaves all of the Israelites. But not only that. You see, this Pharaoh, well, he wanted to make sure that there would be no Israelite male that would rise up and maybe kill him. And so he decided to take some drastic action. He ordered all of the Hebrew babies to be put to death as soon as they were born. And it was into this time, this very perilous time, that a baby named Moses was born. And this baby, he was hidden from all of the leaders at the time, but eventually when he was too big to hide, He was taken down to the Nile River by his sister, put in a basket, and floated out of the reeds into the river. (coughs) Eventually, he was found by the Pharaoh's daughter as she was bathing, and she decides this child cannot drown. And so she goes and hires a wet nurse, who turns out to be Moses' real mother, to help to raise him. And then as he gets bigger... He is brought into the Pharaoh's house where he is raised as one of his own. Well, one day as Moses is walking around, he sees an Egyptian who is beating a Hebrew and Moses decides that he has to intervene. So he goes and he gets in between these two and he actually kills the Egyptian and then he buries the body so that nobody would know what had happened. But later on, he sees two Hebrews that are fighting, and he tries to break that up. And they turn and ask him, are you going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian? 
Well, now Moses knows his secret is out. And so he flees. He runs to a land that is known as Midian. And he gets to a well, and as he is drawing water, he meets this woman named Zipporah. Eventually he goes on and marries her, and they have a son of their own. Well, years later, as he is out taking care of sheep for his father-in-law, he comes to Mount Horeb. And as he is there, an angel appears to him, speaking out of a flame of fire that is burning in a bush. And Moses is called by God to go back. To go back to his people and to free them from their slavery. Well, after some back and forth has taken place, Moses does eventually return to Egypt. On the way, he meets up with his brother Aaron, who will be the speaker for Moses. And they go up to Pharaoh and they say, let my people go. And the Pharaoh says, no. But since you asked... What I'm going to do is the Hebrews now all have to work just as hard as they are now. They have to fulfill the same daily quotas, but we're not going to provide them the material. They've got to go get that themselves. Well, it's at this point that the ten plagues start to occur. This was one way that they thought they would be able to change Pharaoh's mind. And Pharaoh would let all of the Israelites go. First, there was water that was changed into blood. Then there was an influx of frogs and then gnats and flies. The livestock got sick. There were boils on the people's body. There was thunder and hail that destroyed the crops There were locusts, and then the land was covered with darkness. But in all of these cases, the land where the Hebrews lived was not affected. It was only the Egyptians who were affected. Well, then came the warning of the final plague. And in this plague, God said, the firstborn, of all the Egyptians will be put to death. Now, before this final plague comes, God then says to the Israelites, this day, this day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You, all of the people who are gathered here, and your ancestors shall remember what took place Place during this night, and you will set up a special time, a special assembly every year to remember what has happened at this time. Yes, God is telling His chosen people to remember, to remember about what has happened, and to pass it on to the next generation. Because this story. This story is one that both defines God and God's children in an amazing way. But now, as we look at this story, we also realize it's quite a horror story. Just think about that for a minute. This truly is a story about death. Death of children and adults. Death of animals. Death that covers the entire land. Now there is that parallel horror story that comes earlier in Exodus. That horror story where the Hebrew boys are all being put to death as soon as they are born. And it's ordered because the Pharaoh fears an uprising. He fears losing his power and control. And so... He orders his own version of population control. And the Pharaoh himself serves as the angel of death to the Hebrews. But now, in today's lesson, the angel of death comes again. And there is weeping in the streets over the loss of loved ones. 
And the only ones who avoided the horror are the same Hebrews who endured it years earlier. You see, so much of this story revolves around the Pharaoh. At the time, he was viewed by people to be a demigod. And he wanted, he aspired, he desired to be divine. He wanted not only to be like God, he wanted to be God. And this was such a great desire that he had that there was nothing that would get in the way of his power and his control. He would stop at nothing, not even the destruction of little children, to be ruler over all. He would even let his land and his people suffer to keep his kingship. We see this in the first nine plagues. And after those nine plagues take place, and there's still no movement on the Pharaoh's behalf to let the Hebrews go, then there comes the tenth plague. And this plague brings utter destruction with it. All of the Hebrews are told that they are to gather for a final meal, a Passover meal. And so they gather in their homes, they gather quickly, they pick the right lamb, they prepare the bread even though it has no time to rise, they hold hands, they say prayers, they celebrate the gift of family that they have, and they even mark the doorposts of their house and their doors with blood, top and sides. The sign of those who live there are the ones who are enslaved by Pharaoh. And then God acts. You see, there is no armed revolt by the Hebrews against the Pharaoh and his soldiers. But rather, God does all the work. And after the angel of death comes to the land, Pharaoh, in his own time of mourning, tells the Hebrews to go. And so they go. Now why does God want this story to be remembered? What is so important about this story to be told to children for generations to come? Why would a major festival be based on this story, this horror story? Well, in the story... We realize both who we are and who God is. We are the ones who were, and in some ways still are, enslaved. And God is the one who frees us from this slavery. We are the ones who are living outside of the promised land. And God is the one who comes and brings us out of Egypt and started us back on the trail to that land that is overflowing with milk and honey. We are the ones who have endured horror stories in our own lives. And God is the one who comes to us in the midst of these horrors, weeps with us, and carries us out of those dark places. Yes, remembering grounds them and grounds us in the new reality in which they live, a reality as people who have been freed. A people who have God who delivers and saves and does what the people cannot do on their own. But that's not all. For remembering also sets the stage for the future. For a Passover meal that will take place many years later. And a new meal will be instituted. A meal that opens us to receive the grace, love, and forgiveness of God in a way that it has never been experienced before. For it was at the celebration of the Passover when Jesus sat down with his followers and said, This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And so we are called back to this table to remember. To remember that God not only freed the Hebrews, but also frees us. To remember that God not only forgives the Hebrews for their sins and mistakes, but forgives us as well. To remember that God keeps coming to us where we are as we are. To shower us with every good gift that we need. All because we are his children and we always will be. So this horror story that we hear for today, it reminds us that our God is a God who frees. Frees us from slavery, frees us from sin, frees us even from death. Yes, God frees us so that we may live. Live as the little Christ that we are called to be. Live as messengers of grace and new life in all of the world. So let us remember. And let us live. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. Today's hymn of the day is O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life, that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands brings fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom of good and welfare for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold your loving arms around all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us be so bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. If you are worshiping with us at home, we invite you to share a word of peace in our comments section at this time. At this time is when we would normally be receiving our offering, and so we will continue our service with our offertory hymn. Which is, We Give Thee But Thine Own, 686, verse 2. Thy bounties us as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessed us to thee our first fruits give. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts and strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending him sent forth by God's blessing, number 547. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh now he extended the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, to love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your feast you feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.